This is a Nintendo 64 game made by Titus. Those words alone would normally be enough to make any gamer instantly get a sense of dread and despair. After all, when the studio's other N64 classics include Superman 64 and Virtual Chess 64, it would be easy to assume this game would be yet another car crash. Let's also not forget just how many racing games were released and were eventually released on the console. There was certainly a market for racing games at the time, but would you trust Titus to deliver something truly memorable? Thankfully Roadsters is arguably the studio's best N64 game of the seven they released on the console. Landing on store shelves just in time for Christmas of 1999, Roadsters is a multi-platform arcade style racing game which was also released the following year for PlayStation and Dreamcast. Like the name suggests, Roadsters sees you jump into the driver's seat of some fun to drive two-seater sports cars and head out into some open, unique and stylish tracks in an attempt to beat your rivals. Interestingly though, you can also choose from up to eight different characters to drive as, and although it has no bearing whatsoever on how you play the game, it's still one of the few N64 races where you actually see your driver whilst you're racing. There are limited game modes in Roadsters, but that's not to say that there's not a lot to get stuck into. The time trial mode and the quick race mode do exactly as you'd expect. Disappointingly though, the multiplayer mode only has support for two human players, and this game just screams out for having a four player split screen mode but alas, at least the game runs quite nicely in the split screen. For most players, the core amount of time you'll be spending in the game comes in the trophy circuit mode, which is essentially the single player career option. After choosing your driver and naming them, you are given a small bundle of cash to go and purchase your new car. The cars themselves are an interesting mix of real and made up roadsters from big name manufacturers such as Lotus, Ford and Mitsubishi and so on with some blatant rip-offs which have had fake manufacturer names slapped on them. You have the ability to choose your colour and after making your purchase, you're into tuning it. Don't expect Gran Turismo levels of customization here, but the fact that you can upgrade your engine, turbo, tyres and so on really gives this game some additional replayability as you'll naturally want to earn enough cash to max out the stats of your chosen motor. The 34 cars in the game are broken down into three categories which coincide with the three difficulty levels of the championships you will enter. The lower or beginning circuit will require you to use a beginner car, and after working your way through the rankings, you'll unlock the harder circuits and more powerful cars. It's Racing Game Basics 101, but it works, and with the added incentive to earn cash to buy new cars, you won't tire of this one too easily. This is because there's also a surprisingly nice array of tracks to race across. They take place on fictitious circuits across a range of environments and so you'll need to look into your car garage to find the perfect car and settings for each race. The environments are nicely detailed, although you will see some items repeated such as different elements in the game, some of which will look out of place on certain tracks, but you'll hopefully be able to overlook these for the consistent and steady 30 frames a second the game runs at. Adding to this, there's also some nice driver animations such as movement and you also get some character modelled movements when you overtake or are overtaken. Titus were paying attention to some of the smaller details in the game and some tracks have additional features like aeroplanes taking off and boulders rolling around, which helps to bring the courses to life, as does the rain effect if you have this selected. As an added treat, the game also has a secret high res mode Simply enter your character name as Extra Res and head into the options menu. You'll then have the ability to change the game from low res into high res with no expansion pack needed. This does come at a cost though. The heavy letterboxing has a big impact on your visibility. And unless you've memorized the tracks, it can be extremely difficult to play the game with this high res mode turned on. Not only that, but some of the courses simply crumble under the strain and become unplayable. It must have been a feature that the studio were testing, but decided it was too much work. But it's a shame, because if they added the expansion pack support, this really could have been something to behold. The game engine itself is something you'll either love or hate. The cars mostly seem to handle very differently, and there's a distinct difference between racing on the various surfaces and in different weather conditions. 
It takes some getting used to, but once you find your car that you like and you can handle it well, it offers as much challenge as any of the other N64 racing games. The AI opponents don't seem to follow fixed routes on the track and they just show about enough aggression to be challenging without becoming infuriating. Many of the cars do seem far too heavy though, and getting your car to get some air is a challenge, even if you're using the most powerful cars on the largest jumps. This is not a big air racing arcade game, and so if you prefer your racing to stick to the roads, you should find yourself right at home here. For me personally, the biggest letdown overall in the game comes in its audio department, which sadly is very poor and it brings down the overall game experience. The music is a random mix of poor quality, generic late 90s video game styles and the audio effects consist of engine noises that fail to match the apparently high powered cars you are driving. Nothing seems to really fit together or complement one another, and so you're best heading into the options menu and turning both the effects and in-game music down fairly low. One particular feature in the game's audio which must be commended though are the audibles that the drivers make. They tend to fall into the stereotypical lines based on the character you've chosen. However, they can sometimes be quite funny, and if anything, they help to bring the game to life with some much needed character. In the winter of 1999, I had very low expectations for Roadsters. Magazines seemed to be certain that the game would be terrible, and so little coverage was provided of it based on the studio's poor history and their poorly received prior titles to this. It's a shame because although the game is actually quite fun to play, I think many gamers by this point had been stung by the poor titles that Titus had previously put out and avoided this one like the plague. It's not the definitive N64 arcade racing experience, but it's by no means the worst, and for the low price this always seems to be selling for, it's certainly a worthy addition to anyone's collection. And so for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know about a time when you decided not to get a game which you like the look of, purely based on the fact it was by a studio that you'd not had a good experience with or that you didn't like in the past. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section down below, and until next time.